Shop it, man! It's time once again for another episode of Ring of the Hawk. The show where we watch back every single one of a wrestler's matches and give them a final grade to see if they can get a job in Ring of the Hawk. Only rule on this show is that they must have wrestled less than 30 matches for the company. B shows are not counted here. And of course, if you know a wrestler who can do the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day, shove their name in the comment section, Jack. So today's competitor is the one who looks like Elvis. I've been looking forward to this one, he's one of my favourite wrestlers. His run in TNA came in three different spells, so we'll see his progress or lack thereof as the years go on. And by the way, I know Okada won the vote last week, so don't mention it, don't complain, and shut up or I'll smack you one. Look, we have a problem with Okada's TNA run. He wrestled two matches on the main show. By Ring of the Hawk rules, that means we wouldn't be able to watch 12 of his matches that took place on the B show. He barely existed on the main TNA roster. That is a fact. If I bend the rules for him, I would have to bend the rules for everyone. Maybe he should just get his own video instead of one of these episodes. Anyway, back to the one who looks like Elvis. NWA TNA Episode 1. Over the top rope battle royal to crown the first ever champion. I don't normally talk about the details of a battle royal prior to our Ring of the Hawk competitor arriving, but I will this time. If you don't like Jeff Jarrett, look away now. Jarrett is entrant number one as he throws man after man over the top rope. This is my problem with much of the early TNA product. If you weren't a fan of slap nuts, it would be hard to like TNA. He was all over the show. It's why I really enjoy 2007. Also, this has to be talked about. TNA had a rip-off Scott Steiner. He's called Del Rios, but Jesus Christ, come on. How is this not ever talked about? He was never seen on TNA ever again after this. Man, I had to do a double take though. I can't believe there was a fake Scott Steiner, and he looks a lot better than P.T. Williams. Anyway, the focus of our episode is the one who looks like Elvis, Scott Hall, and he comes in during the middle of the match. He opens up on everyone in the ring with his famous punches. Hall and Jarrett botch a little bit, but Hall picks him up and nails him with the razor's edge. Toby Keith comes out to join the match and suplexes Jeff Jarrett, who he's been feuding with. Hall and Keith then throw out Jarrett. Toby Keith then eliminates himself. Or he doesn't actually because he goes over the second rope. Hall and Apollo are battering Malice with chops and they seem to agree to work together. But Hall seems to be having quite a lot of problems dealing with Big Malice. Scott Hall proves that he's smart by chilling in the corner while everyone else fights. He then wakes up and tells everyone, shut up or I'll smack you one. Not much really happens until Brian Christopher, the former Grandmaster Sexy, comes in and eliminates four men. I found it funny that when Brian Christopher came to TNA, he was pushed as a main eventer. Anyway, Ken Shamrock eliminates him. Malice chucks out Apollo who has been in there almost since the start of the match. This match has mainly been built around Malice and he just proves my point as Scott Hall goes for the razor's edge, Malice throws him out of the ring. The final two are Malice and Ken Shamrock. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat is the referee for this portion of the match. What a fall from grace this Malice guy had. They must have seen him as a potential main eventer to begin with. Have to say, he's been impressive in this match. Shamrock eventually puts him away of a belly to belly to become the first ever NWA champion. But that's a bit of a trivia for you. He beat Malice to become the first champion. As far as Scott Hall, I thought he'd do a lot more in this match considering he was probably the biggest star in the match. I think he only eliminated one guy, although he mostly just tried to survive and stay out of trouble. Giving him a C though due to coming third overall in the match. Match 2, second episode of TNA, the opener. Jeff Jarrett versus Scott Hall with Jackie Fargo and Toby Keith accompanying him. Man, that Marvelous Me song is one of the greatest theme songs of all time. Hall starts out the match throwing his toothpick at slap nuts and the crowd are firmly behind Hall. Hall then knocks Jarrett down with a brutal slap to the face. Elvis follows this up with a huge fallaway slam and knocks Jarrett out of the ring. Jarrett gets back in and nails some drop kicks. Double J locks him in the sleeper hole, but Elvis never sleeps, and Hall fights back and puts Jarrett in his own sleeper. Although, that only lasted two shakes of a lamb's tail as Jarrett gets a two. Back on his feet, Hall hits the corner clothesline and a big clothesline to follow it up for a two. Hall goes for the razor's edge, but Ron the Truth Killings comes running out to break up the move. Back in the ring, Jarrett slams Elvis face first. He's looking for the stroke, but Toby Keith hits a low blow whilst the referee is dealing with Ron the Truth. Toby Keith and Scott Hall then hit a double face buster and pin him as the referee rolls back in. 
and he still counts three, even though Toby Keith has obviously interfered. Not sure why. Anyway, a bit of a disappointing match from Hall. Thought there'd be a bit more to this one, and he did have the crowd behind him in the palm of his hand, though. Giving it a D, I didn't really enjoy it. Match three, TNA main event. It's R-Truth, who was going by the name of K-Crush at the time, and Double J Ain't He Great versus Brian Christopher and the bad guy Scott Hall. All four men fight in the crowd straight away. Hall gets the cage dancer out of her cage and then beats Jarrett down inside here. In the ring, Brian Christopher misses the hip-hop drop, so Hall starts fighting R-Truth. Hall hits a choke slam. He doesn't have the advantage for long though as Jarrett is all over him. Christopher gets the tag. I really hated this guy as a face, it just didn't work. Hall and Christopher then crash into each other and Hall knocks Jarrett over. The truth hits a spinning clothesline on Hall. I thought he was going for the scissors kick, it looked a bit awkward. Hall then gets worked over by the bad guys. Jarrett hits him with a net breaker and Truth also kicks him down. Jarrett hits a top rope crossbody but Hall rolls through for a two count. The bad guys continue to isolate Hall as Jarrett hits a backdrop. Brian Christopher is a bad tag team partner, so Hall continues to be left on his own. Truth nails him with the scissors kick, but doesn't pin him. Instead, he locks in a chin lock. Hall picks him up on his back and drops him backwards. Really good match here. Hall is still unable to make the tag, but hits a double clothesline. Elvis finally has the chance to make the tag, but Brian Christopher turns on him and slaps him. The referee gets taken out, and Hall is left in a three-on-one situation. Hall batters all three men and drops Brian Christopher on his backside. He then smashes Truth with the razor's edge. He tries to nail Jeff Jarrett with the edge, but Brian Christopher kicks him and Jarrett hits him with the stroke. Brian Christopher hits his own partner with the hip hop drop and then Jarrett pins him for the three. Wow, this match really surprised me. It made Hall look like a real star as he battled three men for ages on his own, looking good doing it. Scott Hall gets a B from me from this match. And after this match, Jeff Jarrett says he's gonna take Hall out of TNA. He continues to attack him. Jarrett goes as far as smashing Hall with an NWA trophy. They then put Hall on a stretcher and Jeff Jarrett says that WWE ran him out of the NWO and now Jarrett's here to run him out of TNA. Jarrett dives onto the stretcher and Hall is carried out of the arena eventually. Or he would be, but damn, Jarrett throws him off the stretcher again. Good feud going here. Match four, Brian Lawler. Yes, he's dropped the Christopher now. And he cuts a shoot promo before the match about how much he hates his dad. He's taken on Elvis in the main event here. Scott Hall appears in the ring and stands behind him for ages and ages as Lawler insults him and he has no idea that he's there. It literally goes on for two minutes and the crowd are at fever pitch. He finally turns around and Hall batters him. Hall beats him on the announce table and then drops him face first. Lawler tries to run away so Hall chases him down. Lawler's almost losing it in this match because of the Jerry's Kid chance. It's weird seeing Grandmaster Sexy beating up Scott Hall for so long, but TNA were trying to build him up into a main eventer. Lawler super kicks him and climbs up for the hip hop drop, but Hall catches him up there and then he throws him across the ring. Fall away slam by Hall. Hall then stacks Lawler on the top and hits him with a back body drop. Hall goes for the razor's edge, but the truth runs in again. Hall isn't phased and batters him as well. He then picks up Lawler with the razor's edge and pins him for the free. After the match, Lawler low blows him three times. Jesus, don't you think that's enough? Then he continues assaulting Hall's nutsack and Truth chokes him across the ropes. Hall needs to make some friends in TNA. The match gets a D. I didn't enjoy it. Hall is carried out on a stretcher again and Jarrett attacks him again. He looks like an ice cream man in that outfit. Match 5. Elvis vs Jarrett. Stretcher match. Scott Hall meets Jarrett at the top of the match and batters him around the arena. Hall slams Jarrett face first on the edge of the commentary table. In the ring, Scott Hall throws Jarrett overhead with the fallaway slam. Jarrett tries to leave, so Hall follows him up the ramp. They fight backstage and Jarrett hits Hall with a table from the Disco Inferno jive talking set. Jarrett and Hall exchange chair shots in the crowd. They finally make it back to the ring eventually. Hall grabs the stretcher for the first time, but Jarrett slides it into the bad guy. Jarrett then uses the stretcher as a weapon time and time again, breaking it across Hall's back. In the ring, Scott Hall is whipped into the stretcher. These stretchers look like an old school camp beds or something you would see in the army. Hall fights back and throws Jarrett into the corner stretcher a couple of times and then he sets it up across the ropes. Hall then drops Jarrett onto the stretcher slap nuts first. Hall then gives Jarrett the snake eyes on the stretcher and then shunts him in the face. The bad guy picks up Jarrett and hits the razor's edge. He's about to win but guess who runs out? Ron the truth. And he pulls the referee out the ring and hits Hall with a scissors kick. He drapes Jarrett across Hall but Hall kicks out. Monty Brown then fights truth away. Jerry Lynn then randomly runs out and splashes Jarrett. The whole TNA roster then randomly come out as wrestlers try to get involved. Hall starts to get a second win and starts battering Jarrett. Hall then accidentally hits the referee at the stretcher and Jarrett drop kicks it into Hall's face. 
Jeff fetches a chair, but Ricky the Dragon Steamboat runs out. Jarrett tries to hit him with it, and he looks like he does, but Jarrett sells it like he hit himself. Scott Hall then tries to hit Jeff with the chair, but Ricky stops him in the interest of fairness. Hang on, you've been hitting each other with stretchers, why can't you use a chair? But as he's holding it, Jarrett hits the stroke onto the chair and pins him for the free. Oh, I thought this was going to be like an ambulance match. Apparently not. The stretcher is just a pointless weapon. It was a good match, but I'm already getting tired of seeing Jeff Jarrett. And this is only the seventh ever episode of TNA. Who gets a C for this match? Match six. It's a battle royal. Bear with me on this one. They have partners or something. The last man in the match will be joined by a partner for a tag team match for the tag titles. This match is like the last battle royal I watched, except this time Brian Lawler is annoyingly dominating the match instead of Jarrett. Six Pack debuts for TNA in this match, but he's not with Hall, or he is, or Road Dog is, I don't know. Scott Hall comes into the match second from last. Scott Hall eliminates Ron Harris, and then he follows that up by throwing Slash out. Next up, Hall punches his buddy Disco Inferno out of the match. I still haven't got any idea who Hall's partner is supposed to be. Road Dog and Scott Hall are suddenly eliminated, I have no idea what happened, what a confusing match. The tag team match portion then starts. It's AMW versus Brian Lee and one of the Harris twins. Chris Harris rolls up Brian Lee for the first of six tag team title reigns for AMW. Hall eliminated three people in this match, but I had no idea what was going on. It was hard to enjoy it because I didn't know who the hell his partner was. I give it a C. Match 7, Elix Skipper and Brian Lawler with April. Weird team. Versus Six Pack and Elvis. Alright, the band are getting together. Lawler yells at his girlfriend before the match for ages. Scott Hall hits a choke slam on Skipper. Lawler then decides to do something finally as they smash Scott's nuts into the ring post. Elix Skipper hits a top rope leg drop on Scott Hall. Brian Lawler then bites Scott's face. He then gets a two count on Elvis. Skipper goes for a kick and Hall was supposed to catch him but they botch it so they just do it again. Lawler's girlfriend is crying so Lawler goes to check on her and this distraction allows Hall to make the tag to Pack. Pack hits the X Factor but Lawler breaks it up. Scott hits the fall away slam on Skipper. Skipper then goes for a dive, but Six Pack catches him with the X Factor and pins him. A pretty terrible match. Hall did nothing and got beaten down. Lawler is annoying, and it's not made much better by Jeff Jarrett running out at the end of the match and attacking everybody. It was a bit botchy. F. I do just want to say that the length of this video is not my fault. All of these matches have not been short. They've all been at least 10 minutes, so you can't say that Hall didn't want to be working in the ring. Match 8, Scott Hall versus Jeff Jarrett. Oh, for God's sake, the last part of Scott Hall's career that he could possibly have a good match, and he constantly has to face Jeff Jarrett. I've had enough of seeing these two together. It's the same every time. Jarrett runs away up the ramp, so Hall fights him backstage, while Don West says on commentary that Jarrett never runs away. They fight in the crowd. It's no DQ for some reason. They acknowledge that Hall's had some personal problems recently. He is starting to look a bit out of shape here. It's the first time I thought that about the bad guy in this video. There's then a ref bump because it's a Jeff Jarrett match and he hits Hall with a steel chair. Then Kurt Henning runs out to attack Jeff Jarrett. Then the lights go out and R-Truth is backstage cutting a promo about Kurt Henning who he faces tonight. Back in the ring, Brian Lawler jumps Kurt Henning but then the road dog chases him off. I'm getting tired just watching this. Scott Hall then tries to get Jarrett up for the razor's edge but he fails. He then tries again and he's successful. He pins Jarrett for the free. Hall looks like he's had enough here. The match gets an F. So it seems like Hall's personal life is really starting to affect his work in TNA. So guess what TNA management does next? Match 9, TNA World Heavyweight Championship match. The champion, Ron The Truth Killings versus Scott Hall. This was his first and only TNA World Heavyweight title shot. It's crazy how little success Hall had with heavyweight titles. Scott Hall's very happy with his toothpick throwing at the start of the match. Hall shows a lot of disrespect to Truth as he locks the armbar on. This is like an exhibition match as Hall practices submissions on The Truth. Truth hits a power slam on Scott Hall, showing some good strength. Truth hits the scissors kick, but Hall kicks out. Truth follows this up with a top rope leg drop. Hall tries to fight back, but Truth hits the downward spiral for a two. Hall fights back with a choke slam when Truth was looking to put him away. Hall then hits the fall away slam and follows it up with a suplex from the top. Mr. Wrestling 3 then runs into the ring to attack Scott Hall. Ron the Truth Killings then randomly hits a front suplex and pins Scott Hall. Considering this was a world title match, you would have thought he'd have brought his A game to this match. Instead, it was more like a C game. So that's it for the first part of Scott Hall's TNA run. He was clearly struggling and was too unreliable. He'd be gone from TNA for the next two years. It's now 2004 and it's no longer NWA TNA. Management must have felt like Hall was coping with his problems better to bring him back. Match 10, Scott Hall versus AJ Styles. Okay, I'm intrigued. 
Hall is now heel, so at least the matches should be different. They go to the advert break one minute into the match as AJ Styles is putting Scott Hall into multiple pinning combinations. Scott Hall then sort of hits a spine buster. It just looked like AJ jumped really high in the air and fell on his back. Oh, Kevin Nash is now in TNA by the way, and he's joined us at ringside. Scott Hall hits the fall away slam for a two. Scott Hall then works with Kevin Nash to do the abdominal stretch. AJ Styles' hair is a thing of pure amusement for me here. It's pretty long, but he's also bold. I don't know how the dude held onto his hair. AJ kicks Hall's head off. Kevin Nash then interferes, and this allows Scott Hall to hit the choke slam for a two count. The referee is arguing with Kevin Nash on the outside. AJ goes for a springboard, but Scott Hall catches him in midair. Jeff Hardy then flies out of nowhere and kicks them down. This gets a two count. AJ hits a springboard forearm on Hall. The referee is now being distracted by Jeff Hardy. Jeff Jarrett appears. Oh, not again. Although this time he's on Hall's side and nails AJ with the guitar for the free. This is the short-lived faction of the Kings of Wrestling. I give it a C. At least he didn't really botch and AJ was able to do some high flying with him. Macho Man Randy Savage then comes out with the TNA roster to scare away the Kings of Wrestling. Match 11, TNA Turning Point 2004. Scott Hall, Kevin Nash and Jeff Jarrett dressed like Elvises with the Flying Elvises theme music in an 18 minute match. Oh for God's sake versus AJ Styles and Jeff Hardy. Macho Man is supposed to be in the match as well, but he's been taken out. AJ and Jeff do lots of high flying. Hall hits a choke slam on Hardy for a two. Hall keeps playing with the referee and he pulls on Hardy's long greasy hair. Hall is too relaxed and he causes his team to lose the advantage and Hardy tags AJ in. Look at this bump AJ takes on the springboard forearm. Damn. Hall hits the fall away slam on AJ. He really does love that move. AJ hits a springboard crossbody on Hall. And it's nearly over, but Nash pulls the referee out. Hall then grabs a guitar and wallops Hardy with it as he's jumping from the top. Styles hits another dive onto Hall. He must have been fairly safe, because from what I've seen, AJ usually chooses to do his high wrist moves on Hall. Everyone is down, and then the matcher man suddenly walks out. Savage is there in a bad looking outfit. He punches everyone. Jarrett tries to do a sunset flip, and then Savage just punches him once in the face and pins him. God, that was bad. It would have been better without him. It's a shame that he decided to make this appearance and tarnish his career. AJ Styles made it bearable and Hall didn't screw anything up, so he gets a D. Match 12, Impact Main Event, Scott Hall versus Hector Garza. Not a main event you'd expect to see on Impact. The Kings of Wrestling were being dicks to Rowdy, Roddy Piper and Hector Garza, so he said shut up or I'll smack you one and smashed Hall with a guitar. Scott Hall is still dressed like Elvis under his Mexican attire. Hector Garza keeps kicking Hall in the face. Kevin Nash cheats and this allows Hall to floor Garza for a two. Scott Hall hits the back suplex from the top for a two. Hector Garza reverses the razor's edge. He then starts flying all over the place and slams Hall. Hall crotches Hector from the top as he's looking for a moonsault. He then hits the razor's edge from the top and Hall pins him for the three. Not bad from Hall. He let Hector get quite a lot of offense in as well. I give it a C. Match 13, final resolution 2004. Special referee is Rauhu Roddy Piper. Is Scott Hall with an Elvis wig on versus Jeffrey Nero Hardy. Two screw-ups in the same match. Will this be a car wreck? The match starts with Piper pulling Scott Hall apart looking for weapons and he finds a couple. Scott then frisks Piper in return and finds some handcuffs. Jeff rides Scott Hall like a surfboard for some reason. He then hits the whisper in the wind one minute in. Hardy barely hits it and he hurts his little head. Hall then hits the fall away slam for a two. Jeff Hardy then returns that by rolling him up for a two. Jeff then scores a yet another two of a small package. Jeff then dives over the top onto Hall. Back in the ring, Hall hits a choke slam and gets a two count. Hall then pushes Hardy into Piper. Hall has stashed some sort of brass knuckles, but Piper stops him from using them and pokes him in the eye. Jeff Hardy hits the twist of fate and the swanton bomb and beats Hall in about five minutes. It wasn't very good. It looked like they were just messing around. Hall looked like a joke in this match. I'm giving it an F. Okay, so we're actually on to the last part of Scott Hall's TNA run now. He was supposed to return in 2007, but he no-showed, so Samoa Joe wasn't very happy of him and cut that shoot promo on him that annoyed Kevin Nash. So this is Scott Hall's final run with the TNA show. It's 2010 and Hawk Hogan is on the scene, bringing all his friends aboard, and Scott Hall is back with the band. We have 10 matches left to watch, but they only total half an hour. Certainly says a lot about the match quality that we're about to witness. I'm not looking forward to the next 10. Before the next match, Scott Hall tells Kevin Nash he'll see him in the ring and he'll be the one that looks like Elvis. In case you were wondering why I keep calling him that. Match 14, 5 minute, $25,000 challenge. Already in the ring, Scott Hall versus Kevin Nash. 
Scott Hall looks like a homeless man with a filthy grey sweater, and someone has taken a Sharpie pen and written Wolfpack on it. How the mighty have fallen. How could the bad guy end up looking like this? Kevin Nash pounds on Scott Hall in the back over and over. It's just a bunch of punches until Pat runs in to attack Nash. They handcuff Nash to the ropes and stomp on him. Eric Young makes the save. Hall hits the worst discus clothesline I've ever seen. He looks like he's moving in slow motion. F. Oh, I don't know if I can hang in there. This is not a good start to this third run. Match 15, Destination X 2010. Scott Hall and Pat. Taz, of course, reminds us that Hall is the one that looks like Elvis. And they're taking on Kevin Nash and Eric Young. If Hall and Pat win, they win TNA contracts. Before the match, Scott Hall does the NWO survey and asks who wants to see them win some big money contracts and the crowd all cheer. Not many internet wrestling fans in the building on this night. This whole match is a setup that everybody saw coming. Hall and Pac work over Eric Young for about five minutes. They spray paint Eric Young in the face. Young eventually tags Nash in. Nash then turns around and jackknifes Eric Young. Pac then hits the X Factor. For good measure, Hall then goes for the razor's edge, but he needs help from Pac to hit him with it. It's over. Pac and Hall now have contracts. It's not going to be an A, is it? Match 16. The band, Kevin Nash, X-Pac and Scott Hall in the main event of Impact. This is the final time that Scott Hall main evented a show in a major wrestling company. Sad times. They're taking on the team of Eric Young, RVD and Jeff Hardy. Hall looks completely lost in this match and is just wandering around like a headless chicken. EY has been shut out of the cage. Eric eventually does climb to the top of the cage and with the band all lying in a big pile in the middle of the ring, he dies with an elbow onto Pac and pins him for the free. Four minutes. This main event can shove it. F for Hall's performance. Match 17, Street Fight. Team 3D and Jesse Neal versus the band. Hall is dressed in filthy black clothes and looks like he's wandered in from the street. You can tell everybody is handling him as lightly as possible. I say that as Bubba canes him on the ramp. I wonder if he even felt that of all the stuff he was on at the time. Bubba crushes Scott Hall's nuts. What is everybody's obsession with the bad guy's nuts? Hall is slumped in the corner like a sad, miserable lump. Look at him. Devon hits Scott with a trash can and he spins around like a ballerina. Taj says that Scott Hall's looking more dizzy than normal. Team 3D and the man with the mohawk hit the what's up on Scott Hall. The band have literally not hit a single move in this match. Out of nowhere an obese lard ball rolls out to the ring. He gets the attention of Bubba Ray and then Pac hits the X Factor through the table for the free. So the band literally won the match because of the fat tub of lard Bubba the Love Sponge. It's another F I'm afraid. Match 18, TNA Lockdown 2010 Street Fight Cage Match. Bubba and Devon versus Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. It was supposed to be Pac instead of Nash, but there was all that stuff going on with Pac getting hepatitis and all that stuff. Hall tries to hit the razor's edge on the ramp, but Bubba back body drops him onto the ramp. It looks painful for Hall and Nash to even get in the ring at this point in their careers. Hall and Nash shut Bubba out of the cage and he's too fat to climb it, so it looks like they're screwed. Bubba eventually gets the door open to even the odds. The Dudleys hit the 3D on Hall for a table. It was nothing offensive, it was just a fun little short match. D. Match 19, handicap match. Matt Morgan versus Hall and Nash for the tag titles. Matt Morgan has been doing a sole tag team champion gimmick for months and it sucks. Samoa Joe is beating up Matt Morgan. The band then come out of a Feast or Fire briefcase tag title shot. They cash it in on Morgan and they pin him for the free. It wasn't really a match so I can't grade it. I'm happy that this stupid Matt Morgan gimmick is over, but now the band are tag champions. What's worse? Anything else to say? Um, Eric Young is now a member of the band, even though it makes no sense. I guess they needed someone to replace Pac, who's now gone from TNA. The same weekend as the next match we're going to look at, Hall was arrested for being drunk and resisting arrest. Hall did not tell TNA management about this. March 20, Sacrifice 2010, tag team title match. The challengers, Jeff Hardy, Stone, a friend, and the man with the mohawk, Jesse Neal, versus the champions, Elvis and Kevin Nash. Scott Hall is looking at his most bloated here. Jeff Hardy's stoner friend rolls Scott Hall up for a two. Jeff's friend then goes for a kick, but Hall just kind of falls down. He looks out of it. This isn't very good. It's three men just moving around in slow motion and Jeff Hardy's stoner friend. Shannon takes Scott Hall out on the outside. Jesse Neal then crashes into the referee to take him out. Jesse Neal's beating down Kevin Nash in the ring. Eric Young then runs out of a kendo stick and gives it to Nash, but this doesn't really help him and Jesse hits a weak looking spear on Nash. Bubba Ray then runs out and takes Eric Young out on the outside. He then gets in the ring and nails his trainee, the man with the mohawk, Jesse Neal, with the stick. Nash covers him for the free. This match was vile, a complete waste of time. How are they tag champions? F. Match 21, Jeff Hardy's stoner friend and the man with the mohawk versus the Dudleys versus Scott Hall and Eric Young with Kevin Nash. A completely pointless match again. 
The commentary team have no idea if Hall or Nash are competing in this one, and that question will remain for the rest of the time as neither of them are tagged in in the match. Jesse Neal spears Bubba Ray and pins him for the free. The band aren't really bothered. F. March 22, Matt Morgan is supposed to be teaming with Hernandez, but they don't like each other very much, and Hernandez beats him up before the match. Morgan is about to get carried away on a stretcher, but the band come out. For some reason, the referee rings the bell and starts the match with Morgan tied to a stretcher. So Eric Young just climbs on top of him for the free. Take one guess. Go on, guess. F. And that'll be it for Scott Hall with TNA. He was on a nightly deal, and when they found out about his arrest before the sacrifice pay-per-view, they kicked him out. The next night, Eric Bischoff stripped the band of the titles, with Bischoff saying, because of Scott Hall's personal issues, they're stripping the band of the titles. This video's getting long, so I'm going to keep it brief now. Brother, I don't think you're capable of doing the J-O-B to the H-A-W-K any night, any day. Final grade for Scott Hall is a D. The first run was a little underwhelming, but it was fine. The second run was short and stupid, and his third run with the band in 2010 killed it for me. I'm sorry, Elvis, you're one of my all-time favourites, but you ain't wrestling for Ring of the Hawk anytime soon, brother.